Welcome everyone to our second lecture accompanying the exhibition called Revolution at Zachenta National Gallery in, uh, of Art in Warsaw. It's my great pleasure to introduce to you Alexandra Kusa, art historian, uh, curator of many exhibitions as associated uh, from 1999 uh, with the Slovak National Gallery where she is currently the general director. Her interests are the issues of art of, in this, uh, of the second half of the 20th century. And today she will talk about her experiences in working with a collection of socialist realist art. Uh, the Slovak uh, National Gallery founded in 1949 has an enormous collection of socialist realist art of which we actually present a selection at Zahenta. In 2012, Alexandra Kusa was the curator of an exhibition entitled The Interrupted Song, uh, I think the most important exhibition in recent years, uh, entirely devoted to socialist realist art, accompanied by an extensive publication, really a compendium of knowledge on the su <laughs> subject. And today she will Uh, tell us about her strategy when working on the uh, on this exhibition as well as her current project presented now uh, at the Nas uh, Slovak National Gallery and also in the reception of socialist realist art today. So, Alexandra, it was a ple pleasure for me to... to <laughs> and Thank you. Um, it is actually my first lecture, so I hope that with your nice help uh, I will go through. Uh, I named it Who is Afraid of Sorella? And the most important thing is probably for you that the Sorella is a nickname for a socialist realism art in Czech and Slovak country. Uh, and we are using it as a nickname and everyone knows what it is. And uh, we find out that someone is maybe afraid of. So uh, what I am going to do, I have a few notes on our experiences with Stalin, actually. But in fact, we are going to talk about possibilities of museum to deal with social traumas. Because as we find out, and maybe you will find out in Poland during this exhibition you are now having, that the socialist realism is kind of trauma, uh, in, not only in the art historian world, but also at the society. And we find out that when we started to deal with this exhibition, it was called Interrupted Song, the Art of Socialist Realism 40, oh, you, you can see it. Uh, it took only three months, a little more, and it gained uh, 15,000 visitors, what is really quite a big number for our museum because we are not very big and we were not used to uh, big visitors project. So it was a big surprise for us. Uh, the exhibition was during the summer. Usually the summer is not good uh, time for exhibitions. So we find out that there is something, there was something moving for um, people in Slovakia to see this exhibition. And we had this um, beautiful woman on the poster. So maybe that was a part of the deal. Uh, they may, and the name uh, of the exhibition is full of connotations and meanings for us. First, uh, it's the same name as a, a movie, Prervana uh, Pesnia. It was a very romantic movie about the love of the Slovak soldier and the Russian doctor. Uh, then there is this cliche that the socialist realism is interruption of modern art history, so it's bad, bad, bad. Then The, it refers to the policy of happiness as a part of the state propaganda and a typical habit to start meeting with song, always, sorry, as missing. And of course, a contrast. We liked the poetry of the name in the contrast of the 50s politics. Maybe it was why it gained uh, such a big reaction public one on one side, uh, very very nice and warm for the white public and very hard from the um, art historian public. And these are the, the posters from the, about the movie. And this is how they sing uh, when, when the meeting is starting. So there was a big uh, question in front of us, how to deal with this theme? 
Uh, it's always a problem for researchers. It's something what uh, Joanna and Jerome were all, uh, also facing. And we decided to search the collection first. And the decision of the curator was that we are going to show basically the work which is connected only with social realism and with propaganda, not what was uh, kind of modernistic, pure what was playing the role uh, in the official art, uh, in the galleries, uh, during the exhibitions, in the newspapers, only this kind of works. Unfortunately, we don't have such a bombastic uh, socialist realistic artworks as in, in Russia and um, as I see in some other countries, because uh, mostly our art is very small and as you are going to see a little bit naive. There was the other question, how to deal with art that doesn't look, uh, which is definitely not a good art. If you are going to pick some pictures which are not good and it, it, how can an art museum to deal with bad art uh, also with awkward art, because uh, part of the collection contains really very awkward works. Uh, it was because of the socialist realism when the Slovak artists were not sure what it should be, what it should look like. So it was this method of trying and hoping. Uh, this is a very nice comparison uh, on the one side, there is this nice Stalin in white. This is a Czech uh, example. And on the right side, it's a Slovak example from a good artist. But you can see uh, how socialist realistic is the one and how awkward is the other one. So this is uh, how the art, the collection mostly looked like. Uh, we even have this really very strange uh, paintings. This was the first um, Labour uh, president. I, I have never found out why is this a socialist realistic painting, um, but it was at the Museum of the Labour. And then uh, we all, we of course, as at the rest of the socialist uh, socialist countries, there was a big propaganda how the art should look like. This is uh, this should be a, from a satire from the magazine. Tell me the critic, do you like me or not? Uh, it was quoted this very nice, uh, very famous uh, harvest painting by Tatiana Nilovna, and these are some uh, <laughs> Slovak examples when the Slovak uh, painters tried to do this very big harvest team, which, which was very associated with socialist realism. This is my special, very favorite one. When you can see uh, on the right side, the, the painter himself in this uh, funny Las Meninas effect of socialist realism. Now, this is a painting uh, you, you, which is showing at the Walsh uh, exhibition. Also, it's really strange when you compare the, the representant of uh, old agriculture and the representant of the new one. The new one looks a little bit like a dwarf. So again, it's strange. What was actually the true propaganda on how the painters really deal with the theme? Or other one, the romantic one, uh, Again, this is actually my favorite, the romantic theme um, about the factory. Or when uh, this connection with the uh, folk art uh, and, to, and, and, and to put the folk art into the socialist realism, uh, realism uh, man maniera. Uh, all this one is, uh, it was shown at the beginning, uh, this one was obviously very uh, influenced by uh, Quattrocento. So it was again about the finding out what should the socialist realism be. And with this very strange collection, it was really hard 
this is our favorite. We called it the kiss of Yuda in in in, in Slovak National Gallery, or this one, which looks like a Leden's born project at, and not like a Slovak social realism. So, with collection like like this, it's really hard to make an exhibition which is working. Hopefully, the uh, uh, our was. So we divided it into a themes, and we didn't deal with uh, with the uh, themes of art, but we deal with the curatorial themes. We were showing what was the one theme was uh, about the most important artworks and most prized artworks from the exhibitions. Uh, other was about what made to the collection. So the distribution of the paintings was uh, make due to context, and it was a possibility how to show all this various quality, and it was actually finally working. Other big decision about the collection was that a lot of artworks, as you can see this Stalin, uh, were not in good condition. And usually you never exhibit uh, artworks that are not in good conditions, but we find out that the paintings were hurriedly, that the people did it on purpose. So we even showed the wounds that the collections gained through the times. It was again, this uh, subversive part uh, of the exhibition. This is how it looks like we, uh, we painted the walls with a, a very typical ugly color, which was very usual at schools and households. We used this white stripe uh, about the uh, about the uh, near the ceiling. It was evoking the very typical uh, paintings of the public and not in public, but also a private private flats. And it was very helpful that our gallery is not big, so even the size of the rooms was really very well working with the size of collection. It, it, look, it looked a little bit better because the paintings are not the huge paintings we are associating usually with the art of socialist realism. Uh, we really had a what a lot of uh, programs and and uh, and uh, lectures because of the theme we also find out some lost uh, lost paintings like this uh, kind of little bit scary curtain from the from the theater of martin which was uh, we finally found it uh, at the one castle, <laughs> which is part of the Slovak National Gallery, I was asking, what is this? Oh, that's the curtain. What curtain? The curtain from Martin. What, what curtain from Martin? So it wasn't even the part of collection. Now it is. So it was kind of lost and found. These uh, lost and found moments uh, were really very common during the making of the exhibition. We also decided to have few moments uh, uh, around the exhibition to evoke some, some other ideas. This was a typical flat, but it wasn't important that it was typical flat. Under the, under the table, there was a bug and there was a possibility to hear from other room what were people talking there. So it was, again, something what was looking nice and bourgeois, but there was this other line uh, with uh, hearing, with uh, secret police, and with this dark side uh, of the singing. <laughs> or this uh, red room uh, we dedicated to Mila Dahorakova, and there was only a uh, voice of of uh, of the, that a uh, very horrible person was screaming at her during the process uh, and her calm voice answering. So it was, uh, now it looks a little bit more literature for me, but it was uh, 2012. Uh, we, I felt that we need to be, to show that we really know what was the dark side of the socialist realism because the exhibition really looked 
kind of kind of nice and, and very bourgeois actually. Um, and so th this was how it was arranged and we even made a lot of uh, programs during the uh, discoveries during the night. This was a program which was connected with oversleeping at the area of the Slovak National Gallery uh, with, uh, with uh, some uh, this chemi <laughs> chemical alarm uh, introductions and with these memoirs of, we usually had a one day dedicated to a shooting from a gun and everything. So we recovered one, one day like this for the people and there was a possibility to oversleep at the gallery and we always connected a guiding lecture through the exhibition. And also there was a very, what we were really uh, working very hard on, it was a lot, a lot of information, not only about the pictures, but also uh, from the from the papers, from, from the uh, from the archives, a lot of connecting informations to showing not only the the this happy and propaganda way of the paintings, but also the other dark side behind behind it. And the part of it was a big decision if we are going to to exhibit the Stalin statue which was for a very, very long time, as in every city uh, in the Middle Europe, at the main square. This was the original setting. Now the statue, uh, after uh, throwing, uh, throwing down the statue, it, uh, the statue was, uh, uh, was at the, at the uh, statue is in the collection of the Municipal Museum. Uh, it was uh, slightly damaged. Uh, from the 60s when when they decided to throw it out. So we decided to show the statue, but the statue was too big to have it uh, in, in the house, in the gallery. So we decided to, to show the statue outside the gallery. And because we know, uh, yeah, this is how, how it looked like. And because we know that the, each installation is form of inter interpretation, uh, we were very careful how we are going to show this big statue in a public space, because you know, it's very different if you have something in a context of the gallery and if you have something outside the gallery. And it was a clever thought, but we... <laughs> We didn't expect what, uh, what, what, what will later come. Uh, so if you compare the original um, uh, placing of the Stalin and uh, the other interpretation, it's quite different. So we removed it from the pedestal. We decided that the statue is going to be on the ground. Uh, then we decided that we are going to leave all the signs uh, of the strangulation and the signs of the ropes from the knees from the time when they very violently uh, throw the statue down. And also we attached the statue to the building. So he looked a little bit like a doorman. Uh, and uh, under a very big exhibition poster, so it was very, uh, it was very obvious that the Stalin is a part of the exhibition dealing with the theme. But the, it wasn't enough. There was, a, sorry for the word, but it was a big shitstorm about the statue of the Stalin, uh, not from the public, but from the historians and the colleagues from the art historian world, they were very unhappy and maybe even um, very critical what we did in the public space. Uh, um, and it, it, we really had some both very rash 
rash reactions and they even grew on intensity when the bloodbath of Stalin happened. And that, what is now, I we now know who it probably was. There was a, one man who threw a, um, a red color on, on the statue. So, but because the statue <laughs> is, in, is, a, is a, in a museum ownership, we had to uh, call the police and do everything what the gallery needs to do when uh, artwork is damaged. And then we gain, gain, a, a, gain a shitstorm from the public why we are protecting this ugly thing and why do we do it. Uh, but everything, we went through it, we were doing all this lecture. It's actually very good on the numbers of visitors when you have something like this. It's not good for your nerves, and it's, but it's very good for the visitors' numbers. And if you're a curator, it's very good um, for your weight. Uh, because, uh, and there is one more thing, we decided to focus only on the traditional uh, artworks, traditional artworks, 50s, what was considered to be art. So painting, drawings, graphics, sculptures. Uh, we decided not to deal with the photography because photography uh, didn't go uh, under, wasn't under the same rules as the, let's say, free art. So afterwards, one year after, we made the other exhibition, which, we, which was called Captured by Beauty, and it was dedicated on the 50s. And there was much more subversive material because actually it wasn't so much of propaganda photographs in our collection. So it was much nicer and much more sub subversive pictures. And it was a big deal for us. This is even my colleague. Uh, we really uh, lived with the exhibition and with the theme. Uh, and because, even because this was for us really hard, we felt somehow it's unfinished business for us. That we maybe didn't explain enough uh, to the public why and what is uh, so important to deal with the propaganda art. And uh, after all these hoax times we are now facing, we find out that these themes are really important again. So we did it again. Uh, and we did it because of this painting. Uh, we started to prepare a special book. It's first Czech Slovak detective story with our historical plot, comics and historical mo moral. And it's about this huge painting, which is lost, which was exhibited only once. And we prepared a special book, which will be published next month. But it wasn't all because the window of opportunity opened for us. And the window of opportunity was called Revolution. Uh, the exhibition in Poland and the very nice discussion with Jerome and Joanna. And we find out that if we really would like to do more than only to, lend, uh, to send a part of the collection for the exhibition. So we decided to deal more with the painting, but not only with the painting, but basically with all the themes and the questions and the problems connected with propaganda art and totalitarian art. So we, we are trying to find out all the possible pictures of the painting. And then we decided to make a, what we are calling art historian adventure or art historian expedition, because it's not actually only an exhibition. It's not only a program. It's a new approach uh, to the material. It's called, uh, it's called Action Z. So it's something what is not only connected with the curator, but with 
whole kind of colleagues from the National Gallery, from the program department, from, from, from all kinds uh, of, uh, of departments and, and occupations. And we appointed a young painter, uh, Marcel Malish, and we asked him to repaint the painting uh, in a public, uh, to have this opportunity to see how it is when you deal with such a huge propaganda work, because as you seen previously, we don't have such a big artworks in our co collection. Our thinking about the propaganda art is always bombastic and about the mon monumental scale, but none of us got this experience in Slovakia and in Czech part also not. So we appointed Marcel, uh, we picked him because he was dealing with a very similar themes to his artwork. So we didn't pick someone as a slave to draw a painting, but someone who is connecting with uh, such a themes. And he started, last year, he started to prepare for the, for, for the paintings and he started to paint the huge painting in uh, uh, our foyer in the lobby of the Slovak National Gallery. We decided to use not a canvas, but use this commercial banner material because that's the new propaganda material. We decided to paint it in black and white because the only good pictures from the past we have, it's black and white. And um, we are not sure how it is going to end. Now we are thinking about the color, color, colorful gradient uh, behind the, the main scene. Uh, we decided that we are not going to have a Stalin who is the central figure, but he painted, <laughs> he draw the, the head of the Stalin because he wanted to, uh, he said it, I just wanted to try it, how <laughs> it is. So probably we will erase it at, at the end, at the end of the, of, of the action Z. And we also prepared a special projection. When you come to the gallery and you will, stay on a special place they will it will be protect uh, the projection will you will uh will, will put you into the middle of the painting what is for us maybe a very straight metaphor about the banality of the evil and about uh, the ugly truth that the dictator can be hidden in every one of us when the circumstances will be good, it can arise. So this is uh, from, uh, the projection is made that you are in an in, in a exact scale as the Stalin. Uh, these pictures are taken from a special project we are doing with Slovak National, uh, Slovak National Theater. And it's a part site program for the for the action that, and why are we doing this? Why the Stalin for the interrupting song? Why we picked all the socialist realism paintings for the exhibition interrupted song? Why we are painting again this huge propaganda paint in the foyer of the National Gallery because uh, the shitstorm now is not so big, but I think it's gaining the power. And the reason for us is one, and it's because we believe that it's only one road against the danger of totalism. And it's the road of experience and free discussion about what should be avoided, because at the beginning it never looked so bad like when it started and when it gained its power. And also because we need to learn to live with our past, not to forgive, maybe not forget, but to learn how to live with our past. Thank you very much. That's it. <laughs> Thank you, Alexander, for your fascinating lecture. 
Uh, it was very inspiring. I, um, so I, I, I don't see any questions from our viewers. Maybe some, something will appear <laughs> later. But uh, I, have, I have some questions to you. Uh, for example, about the context of uh, founding the national, uh, the Slovak National Gallery, it's I think it's, it's something um, quite unknown in for me. Uh, what were the fifties like in terms of the relations between uh, the Czech and the Slovak parts uh, of the country? And in the context of these relations, what was the significance of the founding of the Slovak National Gallery? And what were the differences in culture policy uh, within Czechoslovakia in the Slovak and Czech uh, parts? Uh, because I think it's important for the context of uh, of uh, your institution. Yes, this poll. Yeah, for us it is very important because actually we can we can think about Slovak National Gallery uh, like about the child of the social Israelism, and um, but actually we are not. Uh, it's a part of the cultural policy and there is a one really very strange thing which which grew up which is connected to the year because Slovak National Gallery was actually founded in 1948 when the socialist realism started uh, it was a part of this hard strange uh, relationship in the Czechoslovakia because before there was an idea that there will be the Slovak National Gallery will be part of the National Gallery and it will be located in Prague, the castle and two rooms there are going to be a Slovak National Gallery. Then the representative, uh, it was one very important person. Uh, it was, uh, uh, he, uh, he was a poet and he was a leftist poet, as, as it was very usual uh, at that time. His name was Novomesky, and he did a lot for the cultural life in Slovakia, and he was really devoted to founding what, what he was called the stone institutions. It was Philharmonic, National Gallery, Academy of Art, more institution, not only Slovak National Gallery. Uh, then he was uh, smashed by the with the with the processes and with the terror of the 50s. But what he did, this founding role, was very important, and we were founded with this very good thinking behind. And therefore, the role for the National Gallery was to build the new institution and not to build the socialist realism. That's why we were not holding exhibitions, nothing. Uh, the directors and the people and the gallery, they're focused on this heroic try to make a national institution in the middle of the 20th century. It was usual to make it in the 19th century. So it was actually a very old theme. And that's why it didn't get much the, collect the collection. Why we have so many artworks in our collection is because it was the only institution and uh, a lot of um, artworks were appointed by a union of uh, Slovak and Czech uh, artists. And after there was a big question, where are we going to, what are we going to make with it? So part was uh, used for, uh, for uh, administration buildings and part was used for our collection. There is one very strange thing about the collection. We had more artworks but because it was art from 50s, what curators didn't like much, <laughs> it was the only time the unwritten rule, never give something from the collection, was broken. And when a school or someone asked for artwork, they usually threw away a 50s uh, painting. So unfortunately, some of the 
Mm -hmm. I, I was really very much really very happy to see that this option within. So this was a very awkward story about the social Israelism and the Slovak National Gallery. So it didn't touch as much, but we have it in the collection. <laughs> I, I see uh, the question from Magdalena Moskalevich uh, about the last, pro uh, the recent project you, you present in uh, Slovak National Gallery. Uh, so I'm reading. Mm, I found the new project, Act Action Z, uh, fascinating. Can you please explain again why you selected this specific painting to be remade? Is it going to be permanently placed in SNG lobby? And if not, where will, will it, <laughs> it go? <laughs> and what is the collaboration with the theater going to li look like? I'm curious to hear more about your motivations as well. Okay, we, deci uh, we decided for this painting from one reason. It was, this is the creme de la creme of the Czechoslovakian socialist realism. Uh, the painters were from the Czech part. And the story is very fascinating. They were working on the painting for two years. Uh, it was a huge rumor that their painting, the, the TV shots were very often, the interviews, and then the painting was shown and it was a big pitch. And the pub and everyone was kind of a little bit shocked. And even it was uh, year 1952, there are some not good critiques to deal with the paintings. And right after this, the painting disappeared. It's almost 10 meters to 10 meters. It's impossible to disappear for such a huge piece of work. So the book we are working on, it's a detective story about two art historians who are trying to find the painting. Actually, spoiler is here, they find it. And, and uh, the solution is very art historian. And it was very funny to, to write it, and it's Czech and Slovak, and everything's in there. Uh, and we picked it because of this strange story behind, and also because we really wanted to recreate uh, this uh, feeling for people, how it is to stay in the front of such a huge propaganda painting. And trust me, it is very strange. You feel small, but also you feel like a part of it. It's very strange how it is working with you. So we are recreating this, um, this atmosphere. We are not sure how it is going to end. It's art historian adventure. So you'll never know how uh, expedition or adventure will end. It will be this lobby uh until end of the year and maybe even longer we wanted to show it in prague because of this czechoslovak connection but we didn't find a partner for it they they're even more afraid of sorella in czech part than in slovakia but we are still working on it uh, so we don't know how this is going to end, but uh, we are going to have a different lobby in a year because uh, maybe finally the huge reconstruction of the Slag National Gallery will be over and uh, this space you saw is the provisorium we are right now, so maybe we are going to have it there three more years and maybe to deal with more contemporary artists and to do more projects and programs. So the end is open. And the program with the Slovak National Gallery, it is something what my colleagues uh, are working on. And it's, uh, it's that the COVID time uh, did something good for us also. This opportunity to work with the uh, with uh, colleagues from the National Gallery, and we picked theater. Sorry, I am theater. <laughs> so we picked uh, three dramas from the National Theater, which are very strictly connected with the question of propaganda and totalitarianism, 
One is about the Lenny Riefenstahl, one is about Milada Horakova, and one is called the Russian Diaries. And uh, uh, the colleagues uh, from the theater wrote a very short scenarios, and uh, the actors from the National Gallery made a little etudes with the paintings from these dramas. And we are streaming it. Uh, now is the first one on. We have a special site for the, the, the Axiom Z. So you can see the first one, the Lenny one. It's actually really strange. Uh, I saw most of the dramas at the theater, how different the text is when it is in this uh, other context, this gallery context. It was very new for us, and I think we all enjoyed it. Did we? Yes, we did. <laughs> and what is the reception of this re uh, this last project? What is the reception? Is does this project also provokes uh, provokes some controversies? Um... It's very slowly growing. Mm -hmm. It was now one uh, TV show. Uh, I didn't see it because um, I don't like. Uh, I, I don't like talk shows when only men are guests. Um, it's we understand it very well. It, it's, it's, not, it's, 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 it's not up to date, and they even didn't ask us. And I know that uh, there were some big questions: why, why the National Gallery is doing this again? We don't understand why Stalin again? Why they are painting this kitsch? But it's strange because uh, this is the uh, artwork of Marcel Malish. <laughs> no. mm -hmm. it's, so there are really nice uh, topics, art historian topics about the copy, about the author copy, about the appropriation. Uh, mm -hmm. And these are, again, questions the our program department is working very well with. So, so this painting for us is a start point mm -hmm. of all kind of, of programs. So thank you, Joanna. Mm -hmm. so you inspired with Jérôme to, to make something bigger. <laughs> Great. Uh, and um, I don't see any questions, but I, I, I maybe uh, I would like to ask you about your uh, very personal approach to this exhibit, this works. Uh, did you find some aesthetic value in this works also did you find some kind of true uh, about this period in this works so what 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 was what were your discoveries during the process of working on the exhibition and uh, on the collection uh it was an accident that i picked this theme it was also a theme of my thesis so my first discovery was when I finished my thesis for the for for the fac faculty faculty of arts. The first discovery was for me that it's uh, I, I picked the topic because I I didn't like the the typical art historian themes. I am to. I am not a person to deal with one church for one year, unfortunately. It's not good with my temperament. So I really liked this investigation because it was a dark secret, the 50s. It was never presented uh, in the storages of the museum. It was always in the dark corner. So I was really curious. I was simply curious how it is, how it was, and... Um, and I found out that it was very different than we think, than we are sure how it was, because usually we judge the socialist realism from the 80s and from the 70s, and we have very hazy thinking about the 50s. We think we know how it was, but, but we don't. So it was the first discovery and the second, and that was why I decided to make this exhibition was that I really wanted to see the artworks, mm -hmm. and to put them on the light after the 50s, 50 years, if they are really so bad that everyone is talking, if there is not a strange hidden quality. And it is, mm -hmm. because from our context, we are reading it differently. These two strange communist leaders swimming in the sea, 
<laughs> it's it's gaining it's a, completely different quality now. Yes, it's, it was very surprising for me also for this painting. Uh, yes. <laughs> Okay, so uh, are are we waiting for uh, any questions from our um, from our viewers? I don't see any anything. Probably mm. they're sprachlos. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, uh, Alexander, I thank you so much for for your uh, for your lecture for your time, and uh, I ca I can't wait to see new project, and I can't wait to see uh, to see the the book, uh, which sounds very interesting. This I'm this glad story. To you. <laughs> big fan for us. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like this. So thank you so much, and and see you on next next le lecture next next Wednesday. We uh, accompany the exhibition. Thank you and so um, good, good luck for uh, good luck for the exhibition. Sorry. Yes, thank you, thank you. It's, it's it's thirty degrees in Bratislava, and we don't. And have the same. Time. This is the same in Warsaw now. So, so no, you are. Have, <laughs> have a have a nice evening, uh, and uh, thank you for coming. And bye. Thank you.